order if Reverend Gary Hager would come forward and give the invocation. Everybody stand. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for being more than a friend to us. Thank you for your sovereign hand upon our lives. Thank you for your mercy that is new every morning and for your great faithfulness. Thank you for not leaving us when we should have been rejected and left. Thank you for this city that we call home. Meet the need that is here tonight for the benefit of the citizens of this great city. Remind this commission of their tremendous responsibility. Remind us that humility is often the bridge over which others will pass to extend reconciliation. Only by your grace can we move beyond where we're at. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do I have a pledge? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Rhodes. Here. Mr. Haynes. Here. Mr. Bowers. Here. Mr. Hedden. Here. Mayor May. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? Mayor Pro Tem, I move that we dispense with the reading of and approve the minutes of February 11th. February 13th and February 25th, as they are. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach? Yes. Okay. I do the next one. Ceremonial items? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Chief? As the Chief's coming up here, let me just ask everybody for their grace because this is Tim and I's first meeting to run. So I'm, we may mess up a little. Guaranteed. I won't critique you from the peanut gallery if that's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, we're going to recognize uh, uh, several officers. First, a retirement. Uh, Captain Dan McCoy, if you come up here, please. Bring your lovely wife, Christy, if you want. <laughs> he said he would get even with you. So. Uh, Captain McCoy's been uh, with the police department 22 years. He served in patrol. He was uh, assigned as a detective. Uh, he left and, and went back out on the street as a sergeant. Was a member of the uh, tactical response team and eventually became commander of the tactical response team. And upon his retirement, uh, uh, he is uh, currently the uh, commander of the criminal investigation section. So he's the head detective. We're losing him. But, um, uh, you know, Dan's, Dan's uh, uh, retirement is going to leave, a, leave a, a large void for us. He's uh, been quite a hard worker and uh, been, been valuable to me. Uh, he's a graduate of the FBI National Academy and uh, several leadership schools, so we're, uh, we're definitely going to miss his, his leadership in the police department. But we congratulate him on his retirement, and I'd like to present him with his retirement badge.
from an administrative standpoint, it's uh, always difficult to lose a, a seasoned member of the department. But when you lose a high-ranking officer, you make three other people very happy. <laughs> so we're going to start out with uh, the first promotion, which is uh, a promotion from patrol officer to sergeant, Travis Kurtzinger. If you'd come up and bring your family with you if you'd like. <laughs> Wife Amy, and I'll let you introduce the kids. Parker, Parker, Preston, and Peyton. Preston and Peyton. Nice. Okay. All right. What we like to do here is we like to pin the the sergeant chevrons on you. So if uh, if you'll take off your FPD badge. I'll do one, and Amy can do the other. If Turn, turn around this way so we can get the photographer involved <laughs> in this. And if you would like to. Now, I didn't give him the back, so don't push that real hard because it's uh, <laughs> sticking real good. Can you hold these for me? Give those to Dad. Travis, congratulations. Thank you. As a patrol officer, Travis has been an accident reconstructionist, and he's also been on bike patrol. So he's uh, a 10-year veteran of the police department, so his leadership will be, uh, uh, be very important. Uh, next we have Derek Napier, from sergeant to lieutenant. His wife, Julie, and... We've got a whole <laughs> army. <laughs> Derek's been with us almost 10 years. Uh, almost most of you know Derek as our canine officer. He's uh, currently uh, uh, handles Canto. So let's just start here. You got your smartphone. He gets a gold badge <laughs> on the first. So today we'll put these bars on. <laughs> All right. Would you like to do the other? Most of the wives know how to do these uniforms because the officers will get up and go, oh, i got to get to work. <laughs> yeah, run right away. <laughs> oh, you don't have to put the stays in there. Can one of you girls hold these? Yeah, no, he can't do enough. Steve, 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 you, Steve, you. Steve. Now, hold on to those. Don't stick yourself with them. You have... Uh, one, two, three, oh, oh, yeah, you need these, don't you? Sorry about that. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations, Derek. <laughs> Our next promotion is from Lieutenant Captain Travis Ellis. Wife Becky. Travis is an 11-year veteran of the police department. He's a former member of the tactical response team. And lately I've been keeping him pretty busy. He's commander of our field training unit. So where we've hired a lot of officers to replace some retirements that we've had, he's, uh, he's had a very busy year. So I certainly appreciate all his hard work training young officers and uh, teaching them the right way to do things, the uh, 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 proper start to their careers. So. Congratulations. As a captain, he'll be a shift commander. He'll be in charge of uh, uh, a patrol shift. Probably, I don't know, probably the afternoon shift. Yes, maybe. Yeah, so he'll be the 
I think it's now time for citizen comments and if anybody would like to come forward to the podium <clears throat> take five minutes just state your name and we'll try to hold you to five minutes anybody <laughs> yes sir uh, my name is Stephen McBride I've had some email communications with each of you the last couple of days uh, I noticed the agenda, uh, item 5, 5.1 as a matter of fact, uh, addresses the problem I submitted to each of you. Yes, sir. I think the uh, solution is insufficient, obviously, but if you read my email, you should know why. Uh, the correction you plan to... Uh, make to this uh, paragraph uh, is equally as illegal as the one you have in place. Uh, the proposed uh, amendment says, I believe, unless an employee is required to carry a weapon as a job requirement, employees shall not be in possession of weapons other than firearms on city premises, including while riding the city, the city vehicles. I may be misreading this, but does this prevent your city employees from carrying weapons in city vehicles? It does not preclude them from carrying firearms. Uh, the statute, uh, KRS 65.870, <clears throat> speaks in terms of firearms. Yes. And so this does not preclude individuals from carrying firearms. It precludes them from Instead carrying other vehicle. types of weapons. In vehicles. Correct. Okay. Uh, then perhaps I did this. Uh, uh, I would like to point out one thing. Although you appear to have gotten into compliance with uh, 65.870, I believe this. I believe this policy still violates the Kentucky State Constitution, which says that people may carry arms for the defense of themselves and the state. It doesn't limit that to firearms. They're allowed to carry any kind of arm to it for self-defense. Uh, I think you're still in violation of the Kentucky State Constitution, Section 1. That's, my, that's all I have to say. If I can respond. Uh, uh, Mr. McBride, thank you for your comments. The uh, uh, we're, of course, taking our guidance specifically from the General Assembly, which speaks in terms of firearms. I, I, so that's why we've addressed it. As I said, I believe you're in compliance with that statute, uh, word for word, but I think you're still in violation of the Constitution. If, if uh, one option the Commission would have, if you want to seek further guidance on this, is, we, is the Commission could request uh, an opinion from the State Attorney General on this, and certainly you don't have to make a decision on that this evening, but if, if that's something that the commission would like to discuss at a work session in the future, uh, certainly the commission has requested opinions from the attorney general on different issues before. So that's, there is precedent for that. Commissioner Bowers? Well, I would just recommend that we move forward so we're not in violation of the statute. And then if we want to do that, as an addendum for later on, but we need to move forward with this part right now. We can investigate that for further amendments, right. I guess. Right. So. I think that's a wise course. Good. Okay. As long as it it gets done quicker than this one does, this one's been in violation for about 30 years. Uh, I, I, we ought to move a little, little. I hope you can move faster than that. We're planning on moving faster. <laughs> um, any other citizen comments?
you, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Then the first and only order that we have this evening is an order deleting paragraph 3.19 from the City of Frankfurt Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual, um, which prohibits employees from possessing weapons uh, or firearms on city premises. Um, this is in compliance with KRS 65.870. I move that we adopt the order. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Commissioner Haynes seconded. Commissioner Bowers moved to adopt. Any discussion? Um, with this, we, we're not going to, I guess, vote on it tonight, but could we, if to, to get further investigation from the Attorney General, if we pass it? We can still continue to get more information. Yeah. Certainly, okay. we could, Commissioner Hedden. We could, if we've got three of us that are inclined toward that, we can just go ahead and have that put on the Great. work session to investigate that further. Yes. Everybody on board with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. We will just do that. Great. We'll call the roll. Commissioner Haynes. Yes. Commissioner Bowers. Yes. Commissioner Hedden. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach. Yes. Move on to resolutions then, Your Honor. Uh, yes, sir. The first resolution, 6.1, is a resolution of the City of Frankfort, Kentucky, in support of the Entrepre Viewer project or downtown uh, project, and this is initiated by Downtown Frankfort. Um, Entrepre Viewer project. It does seek to um, encourage entrepreneurship and the growth of the business startups. It is supported by the Downtown Frankfort Incorporated. <coughs> And I believe um, adoption does help uh, provide for uh, the application of further grants and, and incentives. Yes. yes. Anybody want to make a motion? I move for approval. Second. Any discussion? No discussion here. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Haynes. Yes. Commissioner Bowers. Yes. Commissioner Hedden. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach. Yes. Thank you. We will move on then to um, the next several resolutions are with regard to the community development block grant for the Home Street uh, drainage project. I do want to point out that several questions were raised at our, la at our work session with regard to whether or not these are uh, new policies or existing and through staff research um, through uh, Rebecca Hall, our grants uh, manager. Uh, we have, the City of Frankfurt has approved these in the past. Um, I think our last occasion was in 2004. Um, however, this is a new grant application, so it would be consistent that um, the Commission um, consider approval again. But these have been approved. These are policies of the City, and they are consistent with the Community Development Block Grant. So with that, I think I will proceed. The first is a resolution prohibiting discrimination in um, the sale, rental, leasing, financing or how of housing or land to be used for construction of housing or in the provision of uh, brokerage services. And this is consistent with Title VIII of the 1968 Civil Rights Act. Do I have a motion? I move for approval. I'll second. Any discussion? I'm sorry. I need to repeat them. I'm sorry. No, I need to repeat it for you. I'm sorry. If you call the roll. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Hedden? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach? Yes. Um, item 6.3 is a resolution, uh, again, consistent with uh, our Community Development Block Grant, <clears throat> um, is acknowledging the city's obligation regarding costs which exceed Community Development bro uh, Block Grant funding for the Home Street Drainage Project. This does say that the city will be responsible for costs that do exceed. However, I am advised that um, we are well within budget and this should not be a concern at this point. Do we have a motion? I move to accept. Commissioner Haynes makes a motion to accept. Second. Commissioner Head and seconds. Any discussion? Part roll. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Hedden? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Item 6.4, which is a resolution adopting an, an, an affirmative action policy for the City of Frankfurt as required, again, under local government's community development block grant program. Um, again, this is something that has been already previously approved. Do you have a motion? I move to accept. Mr. Haynes? 
Who says? Seconds. Commissioner Head and seconds. Any discussion? This is pretty easy. You want to call the roll? Commissioner Hayes. Yes. Mr. Bowers. Yes. Mr. Hedden. Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Roach. Yes. Uh, the next item, 6.5, is a resolution adopting a Section 3 action policy for the City of Frankfurt um, as required by CDBG. Um, what the Section 3 is an attempt to hire low income workers, um, not only in the city, but on projects that were received federal funding. You have a motion? Commissioner Head makes a motion to approve. Okay. Commissioner Hayes, Payne seconds. Any discussion? No, sir. Overall. Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Yes. Mayor Preston Wright? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, next item is 6.6, .6, which um, uh, again is a resolution adopting Title VI plan for the city of Frankfurt and it is required by our CDBG. Uh, Title VI um, is, an, a, is, is an agreement um, uh, for diversity in hiring and in the, in the hiring process for this project and for other city projects that re receive federal funding. Do we have a motion? I'll make it. You got it? I'll second it. Commissioner Haynes, motion to approve. Change it up Commissioner bit. Bauer, second to approve. Any discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Hedden? Yep. Mayor Pro Tim Rush? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, 6.7 is a little deviation from our CDBG project. Um, it is a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for a 2013 <clears throat> Kentucky Recycling Household Hazardous Waste and Mercury Grant with the Kentucky Division of Waste Management. Our sanitation department um, would like to apply for um, a foam densifier, uh, skid steer attachment, and shrink wrap machine. Um, the cost for these items total about $53,262. Uh, the city is required to have a 25% match, but we are allowed to use personnel as our in-kind match, and um, it's reported that that will exceed $180,000, so we more than match um, the in-kind requirement. So uh, in, in, there is no actual financial requirement on our part. We have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Okay, Commissioner Hayden to accept, and Mr. Bowers seconded. We'll call the roll. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mayor for Tim Roach? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. We then move to the last uh, community development block grant um, uh, issue for the Home Street drainage project. And by the way, the CDBG is in the amount of $600,000 uh, for the city. Uh, it is a resolution adopting a residential anti-displacement and relocation assistance plan under 104D of the Housing and Community Development uh, Block Grant. Um, and I have been told that the entire work is going to be completed in the city's right-of-way, so relocation or displacement is not an issue. Do you have a motion? Move to accept. Mr. Haynes, move Second. to accept. Second by Commissioner Bowers. Any discussion? Commissioner Haynes? Yes. Commissioner Bowers? Yes. Commissioner Hedden? Yes. Mayor Fletcher Roach? Yes. Are we ready to move on to the consent calendar? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. This is going to be a long consent agenda, so I ask that you bear with me, try and get the information to you as uh, clear and concise as I can. Um, item 7.1 under consent is to authorize the mayor to sign agreements and documents and all the uh, other related documents uh, for the transfer of collateral and security from American Founders to Main Source Bank for the 2007 uh, sewer bond uh, investment. And this basically um, ensures that the 2007 investment on deposit is secured by collateral or a surety bond. Item 7.2 um, is an agreement with the Bluegrass Area Development District um, to administer the community development block grant that we mentioned earlier, and this is for the Home Street Drainage Project. Um, the contract amount is for $20,000, uh, but the actual amount that we've agreed to with um, Bluegrass Area Development is for $11,750. That grant I mentioned earlier is $600,000. Um, the amount will be taken out of the grant, so there is no financial commitment on the part of the city other than the grant it's um, coming from the grant. Item 7.3 is to authorize a purchase order with Republic Services for disposal of biosolids at the Benson Valley Landfill 
Um, I am uh, advised by Sanitary Sewer uh, Superintendent Scalf that the uh, plant, um, unfortunately, in a couple of instances, did not meet um, the sour test. So my first question was, what is a sour test? And that is specific oxygen uptake rate. Um, and there are a number of different reasons that the plant did not meet. This is not uncommon. Uh, but when that does happen, we have to landfill our, um, our sludge, basically, our biosolids. So the um, agreement is in the amount of $70,000. This is a budgeted item. Um, we have budgeted 130,000, and we'll be addressing the remaining 60,000 later on in the agenda. Item 7.4 is the approval of an amendment to the Professional Engineering Services Agreement with Jacoby Tombs and Lands to provide uh, construction administration and resident review. Uh, this is for the VAC truck facility. Um, it's a place where the uh, Department will store uh, solids from um, the VAC truck that we use. Um, the total or original contract amount was $23,945. Um, the construction administration and on-site review will be an additional $17,525 for a grand total of $41,470. And all these uh, funds were budgeted um, out of a 1.8, almost $1.9 million budget. Um, item 7.5, to authorize um, an award of an engineering contract to Hatch Mott McDonald. Um, and this is for the development and implementation of a private property illicit connection program. This is for the infiltration and inflow program um, where the city is trying to remove storm water from the collection system of the sanitary sewer system. Um, the amount is $200,000. Uh, Superintendent Scalf advises that um, we sent RFPs to six to eight firms. Uh, we interviewed three. Uh, it's about a one-year contract, and um, Hatchmott uh, was the, the most qualified um, company that we interviewed. Item 7.6 is to approve a proposed South Frankfurt Neighborhood National Register Historic District. Basically what this does is expands the boundaries in the South Frankfurt Historic District. Um, it does require the approval and support of the City of Frankfurt. Um, by such approval, it will provide additional um, incentives such as uh, federal and state tax credits. Item 7.7 .7 is to authorize a professional services agreement between the City of Frankfurt and the University of Kentucky uh, concerning an archaeological survey of Leslie Morris Park. Um, the amount of the uh, review in this uh, Leslie Morris Park is on, uh, on Fork Hill. Um, the amount is for $11,575. The contract would be completed by September of 2013. 7.8 is to authorize an agreement between the City of Frankfurt and Frankfurt Independent Schools. Um, this is basically an agreement uh, for an exchange of uses of Juniper Hills Golf and, uh, and, and parks, our sour soccer fields, uh, a, bas or a baseball field out at Capitol View Park. It's just an, a, a, a basic arrangement between two taxing bodies for use of one another's property so there is no cost to either one. Um, 7.9 is to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with SG Actu Actuarial Services to perform um, the valuation of the city's Frankfurt uh, Police and Fire Pension Fund. This is done about every three years. Cost of the city is about $2,900, and it is um, funds are available through the pension fund itself. 7.10 is to authorize the mayor to sign the investment management agreement and all related documents um, between the city of Frankfurt and community trust and investment. The fee will be 0.2%. Uh, percent of um, the monthly investment average, and this is an attempt by the city to spread our investments and uh, continue to earn maximum amount on investments that we possibly can. 7.11 is to declare eight Crown Victorias, and this is out of our police department, um, and their equipment as obsolete. Um, our plan is to trade them in to Paul Miller Ford for $13,000. One, by the way, is a, is a total. Um, and we are going to use those funds toward the purchase of a new Ford Taurus. The balance to the city would be $7,348. These are funds that would be taken from our seizure account. 
7.12 is to authorize the mayor to sign a business associate agreement with Wells Fargo Insurance. This would allow the sharing of HIPAA protected information so that Wells Fargo can better advise the city regarding structure and cost of our self-funded health insurance plan, dental plan, vision plan, and workers' compensation. There is no cost to the city for this agreement. 7.13 is to authorize the mayor and, um, to sign a letter of commitment to Renaissance on Main for, um, for Frankfurt to continue their program for 2013. Um, this is required by the Kentucky Heritage Council and requires this letter of commitment. Um, it will help um, the downtown uh, Frankfurt group um, receive um, incentives or apply for grants as well. 715 is to uh, approve a change order number one to a contract with Meyer Midwest. Meyer Whit Midwest. Did I skip 7.14? My, my mistake. So I there it is. A lot of uh, 7.14 is the authorization um, to add funding to a contract with Duke's Root Control. This again is in our sanitary sewer department. They provide chemicals into our sanitary sewers, which helps remove sewers. There is a three-year um, warranty on these. Uh, the amount is $50,000. These are budgeted. We have budgeted $472,000. This action will allow us to use $50,000 of those dollars um, for the continuation of the root control program. And now 7.15, which is a change order to uh, Meyer Midwest. For, um, they have been hired to provide a vestibule, which, provi which provides some energy efficiency at the administrative offices of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, it was discovered that we do need a handrail, so the change order is in the amount of $580. 7.16 um, is to authorize a contract with H&A Services for the disposal of dewatered biosolids. These biosolids would be land applied as opposed to the one that we talked about earlier, which would be landfilled. These do meet the requirements of all of our testing. Um, the amount of uh, is a sixty thousand dollars has already been budgeted um, and we're simply I mentioned that hundred and thirty thousand dollars earlier we uh, we talked about seventy thousand for the landfill the remaining sixty thousand dollars would be for land application and that is with H&A resources 7.17 uh, the renewal of a five-year lease between the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the city of Frankfurt, Frankfurt with respect to the parking lot on Watson Court this is a dollar-for-dollar dollar exchange. It allows us to use parking and our library to use parking or um, the state, rather, finance uh, and administrative cabinet to use. But basically, it's, it's a swap of land use, and I think there's a $1 exchange between the two groups. 7.18, um, this is for the Commercial Mobile Radio Service Emergency Telecommunications Board, who um, is applying for a $100,000 grant for an end-of-life dispatch console. Um, our EMA director, uh, Darren Rambo, approached the work session, uh, the commission at the work session, and did uh, receive um, an okay to apply for this grant by March 15. That was the deadline. It is a $100,000 grant, so the commission get, did give a basic okay. So this would be formal approval of that grant application. There is no match required on the city's part or on the uh, commercial mobile radio group's part. 7.19 is to authorize a bid uh, to award steward contracting for the installation of a sidewalk along um, the eastern side of Shankle Lane from East Main to Shanklewood Drive. The amount is $57,696.65. Um, well, and I think that's it for that. Uh, 7.2 is to authorize a sole source bid, which means it's the only bid we've received, to Liberty Telephone for replacement of the City Hall phone system. The amount is $29,747. Uh, the report from our Public Works Director, Tom Bradley, is that um, our monthly fee would decrease from $370 per month, or I'm sorry, from $1,482 per month to $370 per month. That's a huge monthly savings. That means that system will pay for itself in about 27 months. So uh, well done, Mr. Bradley. The next item is um, 
Well, I guess 7.21 is going to be struck. We are waiting for additional information, um, and we do not have that. Was for the truck, uh, the transit wash, bay <coughs> phase two, and we uh, there were some additional costs that were incurred. We're checking to make sure that the um, costs are covered by the grant. So we'll pre present that at a, an additional meeting. Yes. Do I put the personnel? Mention yes. the personnel. Yes. All right, um, I'm going to go through the personnel. First of all, uh, retirement, Daniel J. McCoy, Police Department. Um, he had 22 years of service, and the official date is March 31 of 2013. We have a promotion of Holly Parker, Public Works Department, from Public Works Tech 2 to Public Works Tech, uh, Tech 4, <clears throat> and that is effective on March 26 of 2013. We have a promotion of Travis Ellis, which we did earlier, the police department from police lieutenant to police captain, effective April 1 of 13. Promotion of Derek Napier um, from police sergeant to police lieutenant, and that is effective April 1 of 13. And promotion of <clears throat> Travis Kurtzinger in our police department from patrol officer 3 to police sergeant, um, that is effective uh, April 1 of 13. And the appointment of, is that Ebony, I guess. R. Thomas. Ebony. Sorry. If Ebony. Ebony. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, e91 telecommunicator one, effective April 16, 2013. Okay, okay we'll go on to board appointments. Sorry. No. No. Right? no. Oh, I'm sorry. My fault. Make make a motion. Make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Hayden? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Pro Tem Roach? Yes. Okay, now. Going to board appointments. On looking at the Code Enforcement Board, there's reappointment of Pat Bacon to a three year term ending 3 22 16, and the reappointment of Tom Midkiff to a three year term ending 3 22 16. I can have a motion either to deal with them separately or collectively. Collectively. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? I move that we accept the code enforcement board of those two names. I'll second it. Any discussion? We'll call the roll. Commissioner Haynes? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Hayden? Yes, and yes. thank you for your service. Mayor Pro Tem Roach? Yes. Also, the Civil Service Board, it's the reappointment of Kevin Mason to a four year term ending 228 17, and reappointment of Carol Banks to a four year term ending 228 17. Once again, we can deal with it separately or collectively. If somebody make a motion. I move that we accept the mayor's recommendation for the reappointment of Mr. Kevin Mason, the reappointment of Ms. Carol Banks um, to the Civil Service Board. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Hayden? Yes, and thanks for your service. Road. Yes. And the uh, Fairman Housing Authority, we've got one there on reappointment of Maria Bush to a four year term ending 129 17. Do you have a motion? I move we accept uh, Maria Bush to the Frankfurt Housing Authority. I'll second it. Any discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Haynes? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mayor for Tim Roach? Yes. Okay, old business. We don't have any, but does anybody have anything to bring up? Well, my understanding is I think that um, you all decided to put garbage on for the next work session, and I'm good with that. Is yes. that what we plan to do? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else have an old business item? I guess I've got one, um, and, if, and if we don't get this, that's fine too. I've brought this up a couple of times. I still think we need a special meeting on the goals and objectives to talk about them in further depth, but I don't know if there's any support for that. I support it. Well, Mayor Pro Tem Roach, I had said in the previous meeting that we're in March, and typically planning time would have already gone, but we do have a new city manager, so I think it might be in order to
to have a special meeting to sit down with our city manager as a group and um, have that discussion again since we do have a different situation now. Um, I had made the statement um, earlier in the work session that I think our staff knows what it is that we want, but um, perhaps it would be good to have a collective group of us sitting down with our new city manager and going over those priorities. So I would be fine with it if that's what people want to do. I don't want to get into, in that meeting, going into very detailed instructions because, once again, I think that we have a very competent staff and I know we have a very experienced new city manager and I don't want this board to be managing at that type of level with some of the goals that we had discussed earlier in the January meeting. But I do think it would be good to sit down as a group and meet with our new city manager and look at overall um, what the overall goal of this commission is, and maybe it's more than one, two, three, but whatever it is, but just to try to refrain from producing a list of 25 to 30 items, um, I, I think that's uh, I, I think that's way beyond what we really need to be doing, but um, I don't know when we might want to do that. Could we possibly do that on a Monday. I know we had talked about having a Monday. We had debated whether or not to have a Monday lunch meeting, um, possibly a Monday during a lunch kind of hour before a work session. Do you think that would be? I would, I would, I would support it uh, if the city manager uh, feels he has that information. I know he, uh, in a previous memo he had said he would bring that in April. In uh, April the 1st, I believe it is, it's the first Monday. I'm not sure if that time frame fits his, but somebody that uh, just came on board, I want to make sure that. Uh, That's not a good day. It's <clears throat> hmm? not a good day. Okay. So There's that's another not a good meeting day. that afternoon. Right. And, and that's why I didn't jump on board to say I support it because I just, I don't know what, I wanted to meet, meet with his schedule because I, I want us to make sure that's a useful meeting and we get a lot done. So I didn't want us to rush into it just to get it done. I don't, I don't either. I don't want to. I, I think it's real important that we have a group discussion with our new, new city manager, a board with the city manager all present to discuss where we want to, the city to go, where we actually want the city to be when we leave office or when the next commission leaves office, what it is we want to do um, overall. And I think that might be a good idea. That's, but I'm just opposed to micromanaging, is what I guess I'm trying to say. Tim, yeah. Yeah, I think you missed. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Head. Thank you. Um, I don't think it, it's anything about trying to micromanage <clears throat> with this commission at all, Commissioner Bowers. I think it's the idea of trying to have a discussion with our new city manager and making sure everyone is on the same page when it comes to what this commission wants or doesn't want to see done um, while we're here. And I just would hate to continue to waste more time trying to get any sort of main goals or priorities that anyone's trying to get done um, and not everyone being on the same page. So you don't want to have I a do, meeting? I do want to have a meeting. You do want to have a meeting. Because I think that the, the, the job of this commission is to set policy. And I see policy as a more general <coughs> direction in which we want to go rather than specific detailed things we want to do because that's what our staff is going to bring to us when we give them a direction in which we want to go our staff is going to bring those details to us to to be voted on but whatever y'all want to do i can meet okay. yes and may i Mr. Head. and staff does bring stuff to us but we're also elected into office based on policies and procedures that people want us to push forward Mm -hmm. So policies. Let's, I think we're on the same page. We're on the same page. I think we're on the same page. I think probably what you're hearing is two of us want to meet, and I know that you do. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I think maybe what we need to do is just set a figure meeting. out when the mayor and the city manager and uh, Mr. I'm good all day on Mondays. And I think we had this discussion once before. And each, I think we just need to pick a time that's convenient with our city manager and our mayor and all the commissioners can be in attendance and. We're on the same page. Are we on the same page? I think so. so I, 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 I think, think we have a. Consulted. Yes, sir. I think I think we have a consensus of the people that are here. So I think all we would need to do from here is is for the clerk to email 
and set up and with, with consulting with city manager and email that out and get that set up and let me just make a quick clarification and that is the first month that we were in office together we all came together and came up with 45 policies you could call them objectives you could call them goals whatever you want to call them there's 45 items we came together we agreed on 43 of them as I remember and two of them we weren't all on the same page the reason why I've asked three times to meet not that it's a good idea the reason why I've asked that is because I'm not sure we ever were for sure what each of those items really meant so I thought it would be a good idea to make sure we knew what we were dealing with what the item was so that when the staff is directed to do those items that we actually mean for them to do those items and then with the new city manager it would be wise to get his sense of it so I think we're all sort of saying the same thing I hope we'll get you some dates okay thank you <clears throat> any other old business <clears throat> None? Okay. New business. New business, Your Honor. Um, the only item we have at this point is to consider uh, a three-year contract with carry towing uh, and recovery uh, for the hauling and storage of motor vehicles. Uh, the current contract for hauling and storage uh, has expired, and after receiving and reviewing uh, two proposals, it's been determined that carries towing and recovery is the um, lowest priced uh, proposal. Uh, it does include a hundred dollar payment to the city, and the and the the towing is pro uh, actually paid for by the person who owns the vehicle. So, uh, it's my understanding there are two parties here to discuss the issue with the commission. Yes, sir. Um, how do we want to proceed as far as which? First. Okay. Do you have a motion? I, I move for approval uh, of the recommendation of staff. I'll second it. We can move to discussion. Okay. Discussion? Then give an opportunity? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, which, which side? Which one? Doesn't matter. Okay. Ask, ask, ask would either side like to speak? <coughs> Go ahead. I would like to speak. You may want to hear from yes, sir. Five minutes each. Five minutes each, sir. <coughs> you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go ahead, Mr. Kirkland. Go ahead. To the podium. Just going up to the podium. Thank you. Say may it please the court, but then again, we're not in court, so <laughs> no, sir. May it please the commission and Mayor Pro Tem, the uh, our new city manager, city clerk, Honorable Robert Moore. If I missed anybody, I apologize. And Bill, for the audience, if you could state your name, please. My name is Bill Kirkland, I'm a lawyer, I represent uh, Harrods uh, Diesel Towing and recovery uh, with respect to this proposed contract. Uh, <clears throat> my office is in the Whitaker Bank building about uh, four or five blocks across the river. And I'm here to oppose what I understood was a recommendation for carries uh, towing out of Lawrenceburg. However, I must say that as I have asked around the City Hall here, nobody has recommended carry, so I suspect that that was a mistake. And I'll get into that and why it probably is and would be a serious mistake. Let me tell you first that <clears throat> Wayne Harrod, he's a wrecker operator over there, and he's been doing this for 50 years. He started with Bonds down here, and everybody knows where Bonds Garage is. Uh, he remembers when this was the Buick garage, this very building, and Butch Berry, who's 
his associate over there, he's a general manager, and Butch gets out four or five nights a week occasionally in the middle of the night to go tow people. Uh, Wayne has been in the record business for over 50 years. He started in 1964 on Home Street, 1966 out on Versailles Road where I first met him, and he moved around 1985 up on East Main near Kentucky State, a lot of you remember that. And with the expansion of Kentucky State and for other reasons, he built a state-of-the-art facility on Twilight Trail. It took about three years to build that from roughly 96 to 99. He has a 60 by 150 foot building with offices and storage facilities. He does some mechanical work uh, in addition to the towing. He also paved a large portion of the storage area. <coughs> the public area is paved with concrete, he has asphalt. Over much of the other area, he has the eight foot fence that's required or was required at that time by the city and he has barbed wire. And recently he's had to uh, change the fence because his neighbor is selling the property or whatever and he had put the fence up to her property but that has to be moved. Um, <clears throat> both Wayne Harrod and Butch Berry uh, are lifetime residents of Franklin County. Wayne Harrod is a master tower the only one that I know of in this area, he took a test several years ago up at Kentucky State, and he has been certified as a master tour. I would like to point out that they have about three times or four times the equipment and personnel that are required for this contract. I will show you in a minute that he has four large wreckers in the 35-50 ton range has uh, one medium wrecker, uh, four small wreckers, four rollbacks that are operational and can be used, and one service truck. In addition, he has on his property three flatbed trailers, so when there's some kind of a serious uh, freight problem on the interstate, he can load that on those flatbed trucks, tow it to his facility until the trucking company can come pick them up. Um, all of his fencing, his pavement, his building, his procedures uh, meet with every city standard. Uh, he has uh, five drivers, some full, some part-time, that have CDLs. Only persons, drivers, who are driving something more than 26,000 pounds have to have CDLs. But all of the drivers have to have their physical cards be examined regularly. He has nine drivers who have physical cards and five who hold CDLs, and Wayne is a master tower. Um, he is nationally certified, and uh, he has had a contract with this city for approximately 15 years. I don't know exactly. Uh, <clears throat> when he first got the contract. contract. Now, I will just briefly contrast uh, Carey's, and I understand that uh, he's a good fellow from Lawrenceburg. And he's been in and out of the towing and junkyard business now for several years, and uh, he is 15 miles away in the adjoining county. And all of us have uh, deep respect for Anderson County and Lawrenceburg, but the fact is, if you look on the official highway map, it's 15 miles away from his junkyard to the city hall here in Frankfurt, which means that he has a lot longer to drive, assuming his drivers come out of Lawrenceburg. Now, we have heard the possibility that he'll put a bed or something in a building that he's going to construct out here off Home Street, maybe have somebody sleep there overnight and wait for calls, but as of yet, that has not happened. Um, it is also true that Mr. Carey had the AAA contract here in Frankfurt for a number of years, about seven years, and uh, I don't know when he first uh, got his first uh, uh, 
city uh, tax credentials. I know that he got his uh, city, there, there was a license that he got in January. I don't know whether they had one previously or not. Mr. Kirkland, if, if you could um, take about another minute to All finish right, up, because I think we're a little over five. If I may do this, yes, uh, let me give you, each of you, I have, may not have enough. And I will Thank you. hurry through this. Thank you. All right, I've got one for the city manager, one for the city attorney. You can indulge me for just a couple of minutes, and I think that's what you've offered. You will see <clears throat> Exhibit A that the reason I said there was a mistake on this recommendation, the chief procurement officer, uh, Major Jeff Abrams, recommended uh, Harris Towing because of its long record of excellent service. I don't know, something happened between the procurement office of the police department and the making of this agenda. I assume that that's a mistake. Ordinarily, the city commission would consider and hopefully approve the strong recommendation of the police department about who is best qualified. Another thing I want to point out to you is that Perhaps the business track record of the Cary company is not what it should be because most of last year he had no workers' compensation insurance whatsoever. Yet he was entering Frankfurt and coming over here on his AAA contract or coming any other time he could, he had no workers' compensation insurance. There's a letter from the Kentucky Labor Cabinet that points out that he did get workers' comp insurance again after the 10-month hiatus on January 31, 2013. Notice on the page behind that, it says <coughs> trucking, local hauling only, and drivers. I don't know what that means, Lawrenceburg, Anderson County, or what it means. Now, I want you to look on the next section, I guess it's section C, with the records and the equipment. Mr. Kirkland, just kind of, you need to wrap up if you I could. Go ahead and just wrap Thank up. You. Thank you, because you've gone a little over and we'll give Mr. Jones a little time too. I apologize. That's all right. You don't get a lot of time, I understand. Um, this is important. Yes, sir. Average. Look at the equipment. He's got four humongous records. He's got a medium-sized record. He's got three or four rollbacks. He's got small records. He has people that go home every night with a cell phone. If they get called out in the middle of the night, they're on the way. I have talked to the city police officers here. They strongly recommend errands. I asked Chief Wilhoy, I said, do you have any objection to errands? He said, I have heard no objection. I've had no complaints. I talked to now Lieutenant Derek Napier, I said, have you had a problem with Harris? He said, I have not. He said, I think they deserve the contract. Okay. Well, why don't we end right there? Th okay. Thanks, Mr. Kirkland. Thank you very much. Commissioner Can I just request that um, I want to hear from both sides until both sides have told me everything I need to know to make a vote because in, I'm not ready to vote tonight unless I can hear everything that needs to be said. Could I request? So you'd like an extension of the rule? I, I would request that we, and for Mr. Jones as well, that we let them <clears throat> make their arguments until they feel like they've made them because I really want to know what I need to know. Is that okay? Could can I, I make a suggestion? Yes, yes. sir. Uh, Bill Kirkland and Charlie Jones are both great advocates for their clients and they'll both do an excellent job. But yes. if you give them as much time as they want with no <laughs> limit, <laughs> you may want to set a time frame for them to present their case. Well, could we, could I request that we give an extra five minutes to each side? Oh, sure, sure. Would that be okay? So, how, how, so basically we're looking at 15 minutes well, a side. 15 right. minutes each. Commissioner Hedden recommends 15 minutes each, and I would be okay with that too. Commissioner Haynes? Okay, we'll go with... 
So, Mr. Kirkland, you'll get five more minutes from this point in time, and then we'll let Mr. Jones have 15 minutes All as right, well. I'd like to reserve my remaining five minutes. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason they're lawyers. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Roach, Commissioners, and uh, Mr. Ziffoff, our City Manager, welcome to Frankfurt. Uh, my name is Charlie Jones, who represents Carrie's Toy Recovery, and uh, I'm at 315 High Street here in Frankfurt. Appreciate the opportunity to, to uh, I guess, uh, represent my client here and present uh, his proposal for this bid tonight. Um, as speaking to Mr. Kerman brought up, the, the recommendation of the police department of the Kerman office, it was my understanding that the police chief recommended Harry's, and I'm sure that you're going to ask him to come up here and, and clarify that, but it's my understanding that uh, Harry's had been recommended, and I think it was recommended because of the overall bid proposal. I don't know if you all have the proposals in front of you, but obviously on a bid proposal, one of the most important things is price, uh, the price criteria. And on these bid proposals, what they look at, is how much you're going to charge really the citizens of Frankfort, Franklin County to tow their vehicles. If they're arrested for a DUI, if there's an accident, if there's an inoperable vehicle. The city of Frankfort is kind of granting a license almost, a monopoly to one company to, to get called out. So if there is those situations, the dispatch calls a particular tow company. So it's almost monopoly. So you're in the situation of really protecting the best interests of the citizens community. And one of them is a price point. On the contract, I think there's 16 price categories on there, and the two bids were equal in three categories, but Carries was better in 13 other categories, was cheaper in 13 other categories. Uh, there is both bids, it's free to the city. Uh, we provide towing to police vehicles or ambulances. It's free towing. I believe both bids were, were similar on that as well. But to what affects the citizens of Frankfort and Franklin County who may have to use these services, the prices are vastly cheaper under Kerry's bid, my client's bid, than the bid submitted uh, by Mr. Harrod. So I think that's important. We spoke about equipment, uh, the equipment specifications within the bid package. Um, we certainly comply with, Kerry's has the uh, equipment that we based here in Frankfurt uh, to meet the, uh, the contract needs. I, I would say that, um, although I don't know this for sure, but it's my understanding that that Harrods didn't have one piece of equipment that could tow a fire truck. And to do this fire truck, you have to have this underreach. And we found out that there were six times in the past three years where the city actually had to call a different tow company to tow because Harrods didn't have the required equipment to do that. Mr. Carey has informed me that he has all the equipment that could tow any vehicle that the city of Frankfurt has. And actually, in the past three years, the city of Frankfurt used Carey's towing, called on them in the past three years to tow some of their vehicles. Uh, that I believe cannot be accommodated by Harrods. So it is equipment um, it is certainly meets the bid specifications over and above what is required. <coughs> Spoke about location. While Kerry, Mr. Kerry does have an, a location in uh, Lawrenceburg, he has a location here in Frankfurt on Rouse Avenue. I have a three acre site on Rouse Avenue uh, that has over an acre and a half of paved and a, a gravel surface. Uh, to accommodate the number of cars that we park there. I think it's calls for 50 or 75 cars in the contract. He can park two, three, four times that many on his uh, facility. I think the location is important. Uh, the location of carries is within the city district, within the, the confines of the city, which means his employees would be safe paying city occupational taxes. Uh, I think it's a more central location. We feel it is to east and west side of Frankfurt uh, than the other applicant who's on the far western side of town. So I think that the location uh, is important. As to facilities, uh, I think our facilities are unmatched. Uh, once again, it's a three-acre site, has an eight-foot opaque fence all the way around it, which is in compliance with all uh, rules and regulations. Uh, there is a separate building uh, on the facility because the police want a building where you can put two vehicles in the building so they're secure. Uh, he has a separate building that is separate from his office that can be secured solely by the police. You can hold four vehicles in that building. That building is inside a double fence area on his uh, property to provide complete security for the police. Uh, I believe there's one thing that might have impressed. The chief came out to our facility to inspect it and saw the facilities uh, and, and knows that it, it complies. Um, there's also 24-7 uh, video surveillance at the site on, on Rouse Avenue. Um, 
We have uh, monitors uh, that monitor the entire property. We have uh, more than adequate lighting uh, for security at night. I may approach. Four turn again. These are some photos of Mr. Carey's facility on Rouse Avenue. I'll look at the clerk's back. As you can see, the photo is very clean uh, uh, facility, wide open, uh, fence from the outside, but also an interior fence to keep the public from the cars once they're on the interior of it to keep the, the public from uh, the vehicles unless they're authorized and to separate the public uh, from the building uh, that provides the um, security for the police if they have to impound a vehicle in the office there. And the last three photos are the 24-7 uh, monitoring system there and already in place on this facility to give video surveillance of the property. I think, again, that also adds to what we understood to be the uh, police's recommendation for carries because of that. Um, again, we're under in compliance with all rules and regulations. Uh, one is the opaque fence. Mr. Kirkland mentioned that uh, they were changing the fence out at Mr. Harrod's place and said he was in compliance with city standards. Actually, we, he's not. Uh, county and city standards have always required an opaque fence surrounding, an eight-foot opaque fence surrounding the property. Uh, we're the only one that has that. Uh, we've got our fence permit uh, from the city, got the fencing permit, built the fence, and it's been inspected and approved by the Planning Zoning Office. Uh, we think we're actually the only ones that are, that are in compliance with that. Um, Mr. Carey's not 15 miles away. He's a mile down Harrods, uh, down uh, Home Street on Rouse Avenue. Uh, we'll have that staffed uh, people here. Obviously, he's going to staff his facility in Lawrenceburg, but he will have, have equipment that stays in Frankfurt to accommodate the contract. People working in Frankfurt to meet this, they will not be called from, from Lawrenceburg or elsewhere. They'll be called from Frankfurt, and that will be staffed and manned 24-7 as a security there. So I don't think it's an issue of our town. And again, he is from Lawrenceburg. I appreciate Mr. Carey's been a long time businessman in Frankfurt. Uh, but Mr. Carey uh, uh, has made investment in the community in Lawrenceburg. He has done work here before. The city itself has called on him before to do services for him. Um, and again, being within the city confines, uh, he will be paying the city occupational taxes for his employees there. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, it was a passing reference to workers' comp and everything. I've got all his workers comp, his insurance, uh, city license, everything that's in compliance now. I think the bid contract requires that on the date of the awarding the bid, everything is in compliance. It is now and would be on the date of awarding the bid. We have to answer any questions you may have or speak further. I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kirkland. I think we now see that this is an issue of penny wise and pound foolish. If you take a few dollars here and there and you base your judgment on saving a couple of dollars here and there and put a person in position who cannot do the work and does not have a history of good business practices, then you would be pound foolish. Now, back to a couple of, well, let me address a few things here. The fire truck issue. You'll see, I think, the first record that's listed in those uh, pictures uh, has about a 120 inch under carry. I'm not sure what the term is, but that's the only way you can take heavy trucks. You don't use cables to do that. Now, <clears throat> that particular, his biggest record was out of town on the day that the fire truck needed to go to Cincinnati. Harrods was called and he said, as soon as my truck gets back in with long enough undercarry, then I'll take it. The next biggest truck had a 76 inch or an 80 inch undercarry, which would not get under all of that front section of the fire truck. He has been able to transport a fire truck anywhere it needs to go all along. But like anybody else, occasionally that big wrecker is out of town. He has not two buildings, he has one gigantic building that's, uh, what, 9,000 square feet. He can put about 
oh, 15 or so vehicles in there. All he has to do is move some of his records out of there. He has plenty of space. He also has video surveillance. He has lighting, as you will see on those pictures. Uh, he has a fence that, to his knowledge, and for the first time tonight, we heard that he's supposed to have an opaque fence in, in the county. The city approved it twice, and I have never heard this before. Now, however, within 60 days, as the contract provides, if he has to have an opaque fence, he'll go out there and put an opaque fence. If the other side can promise to do stuff for you to get in, in league with what's required, Wayne Herod will promise to do the same thing. Now, a couple of other things that you may want to look at and you may not. Now, these get a little bit on the personal side and they may not be uh, necessarily appropriate, but you will see there are four pages, I believe it is, of uh, some older uh, cold check problems that Mr. Carey has had and I assume he's cleared those up, but as you will see from this record, he wasn't any too hurry and too much of a hurry to clear up his cold checks. In fact, they had to bring him back into court. You will also notice that there are about four or five pages of civil cases, not too many lately, but it shows you the nature of the businessman with whom you are about to deal if you award him this contract. He did not have workers' compensation for nine months before January 31, two months ago. He did not have it. He operated all these records he says he has with all these men with no workers' compensation insurance. Now, if he drops it and he comes over here and he has a, an employee that's injured, who's going to get sued? The city of Frankfurt will get sued. I urge you to look at the comparative records of these two companies and you will see that Wayne Harris and Butch Berry have given unparalleled service to this city for 15 years and for years before that. Wayne Harrod grew up here. The Harrods are from Frankfurt. Now, it is true that it's 15 miles to Mr. Carey's home base. Why you, the representatives of the capital city of Kentucky, would want to go 15 miles away to hire a person with this kind of record astounds me if that's true, the truth. Again, this would be penny-wise to save a couple of bucks here and there and pound foolish to get the wrong person on this important, serious contract. And I thank you for your attention. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Kirkland. Any of the commissioners have any questions? Uh, Mayor. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Mr. Jones had five more minutes if he had something. He wanted to add. I was going to get him up there after. Oh, I'm sorry. We got, but it's the <clears> same <throat> difference. Go ahead, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Just briefly, uh, uh, didn't know the discussion was headed this way tonight on a bid proposal, and uh, disappointed that it headed that way. Uh, Mr. Carey's an upstanding gentleman. Everyone's had problems in the past. He's fully in compliance. Mr. Kirkland said issues years ago. Uh, if we threw bids out based on things like that, You'd be lucky to get a lot of bids from uh, uh, things of this nature and from other people. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Carey. All he's thrown out is uh, aspersions about bad checks and stuff, nothing about his business practices or anything that would impair his ability to perform the terms of this contract uh, that the, the city is seeking to award. Um, I think that uh, as we've set forward and shown our bid proposal, um, uh, he's in compliance. His facilities are far better. His pricing is far better. Um, and again, we believe the police chief has recommended or the procurement office has recommended can, uh, his over them. He's uh, certainly yes, has a, a, a business in uh, Lawrenceburg, uh, but if you restrict your bids to only people who live in Frankfurt, again, you wouldn't get bids from, from many people on, on various new things. He's going to come to Frankfurt. He's already opened up a place here in Frankfurt. He's already op operating from there. Um, and again, we feel that his uh, bid proposal is the most appropriate. Uh, in the best in the interest of the city and the citizens of Frankfort and Franklin County. Thank you. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for either Mr. Kirkland or Mr. Jones? Commissioner Bowers? I probably don't have a question for them, but um, I guess in general, um, 
Abrams made a recommendation, and then where did that go? Why don't, why don't we ask the chief to come up, because I believe he's the point person that we need to ask any of the, these type of questions that might have come up as a result of hearing Mr. Kirkland and Mr. Jones. Okay, if y'all direct any questions that you have to Chief Wilhoyt. Can you tell me, refresh my memory, I've been gone for four years. After the recommendation from Abrams is made, then where does that decision, what's the next step in that process, where does that uh, decision go? As a staff decision, it would go through the acting city manager. And uh, uh, what you have in your board packet, uh, perhaps Mr. Jones and Mr. Kirkland didn't have the benefit of seeing, was a memorandum from me as acting city manager okay. recommending that this uh, item be placed on the agenda and the reason being for the um, uh, lowest bid and meeting the technical specifications. Other questions? I, ha I have some other questions not for, for them. Um, how many towing and recovering business licenses do we have in town? Do we know? I don't know. There's, there are towing several agencies that companies. are several uh, businesses that, that do towing uh, of various various sizes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it just seems that I guess this issue, this issue came up in the year 2000 uh, with Mr. Kirkland here and, and I, I'm just wondering if having a revolving contract with multiple people who are licensed in the city to practice is a better option than just doing this straight out bid. And if certain people do have the equipment and other people's equipment's in Cincinnati, um, I think the sheriff's office is, is operating like that, not to say we need to compare to them, but um, if it's working, I don't know if it's worth trying. If you're asking me, my preference would be to award a bid uh, to a singular company rather than revolve for the city police department. Mm -hmm. uh, the sheriff's office, uh, it may work better for them. Right. You know, I don't, I don't know. But uh, I do know about the police department and, and the way we operate, we depend on uh, our contractor to get out there at a certain time. Uh, we can hold them to, a, to the contract to uh, 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 certain performance standards. And that's what we would expect. You wouldn't necessarily get that with people on revolving, uh, on a revolving list. Uh, they may not have the equipment. They may not be able to clear the intersection. They may not have enough equipment to clear a multiple vehicle accident. So having a contract assures us two things: uh, one, that, that we can you know, hold the contractor to a certain standard as far as response, and then there's a storage. Well, actually, three things: storage of the vehicles. Mm -hmm where our citizens can go pick up their vehicles after they've uh, uh, been taken care of, either uh, you know, get out of whatever jam they're in or have their insurance adjuster look at it. And number three, security of evidentiary uh, vehicles. Vehicles that need to be processed for evidence. We, we like to have a, a secure place that uh, unless the city chooses to build us a secure facility, then uh, we're at the mercy of a contractor to uh, provide that for us. And, that's part of the bid specifications. Right, and with that, when there is an accident, it, it is true that any citizen has the right to, to pick whoever, that is whoever, correct. whoever they want. That is correct. Um, but the, the city holds the contract with the company, and that's who, if nobody says, I want so-and-so towing company to come pick me up, the city's contract upholds and says, well, we'll just call these people in because that's who our contract's with? That is correct. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Well, I just have, it's not really, well, something we'll talk about later. I was just going to say, and I'll just throw it out there, would it not be better to have a contract for a shorter amount of time, like two years, if you don't like the way it's going? <clears throat> But, I mean, that's something that's not part of this, but... I, I, I don't know. It seemed to me that our previous contracts were a shorter period, two years. But uh, uh, 
uh, Ms. Disponent from the purchasing office uh, put that bid out, so I, I don't mind. And so it's, it won't change this one, so. Yeah. Other I guess questions? can I just can I just ask people to ask the public if if ever we are voting on something like this again that somebody has a problem with, I would much prefer to hear about it before I get to the meeting. I mean, I'm happy to hear about it here, but it places me in a situation where I really like to think things through and I really like to look at it from every angle I can, and I'd really like to take these home tonight and study them. Um, if indeed there is some sort of um, uh, I don't know if the word I'm looking for is I'd like to have more time to study an issue that is, has become controversial. And to be quite frank with you, I don't remember in the eight years I was here before ever having a controversy over a bid award. Um, so my practice was always to accept the recommendation of the staff, which is what I'm leaning towards doing because I don't have time to really digest everything in the documentation that I've been given tonight. And uh, I just made the statement a bit earlier that I don't want to micromanage. And so, indeed, I don't think that uh, that's the commission's job is to be comparing the bids unless they're given to us before we come into this vote meeting. So just for the general public, um, and I'm glad both of you gentlemen came tonight, but I would rather know about any controversy before I actually come in and have to vote um, in case there is some sort of information that I need to view or study before I have to cast a vote. And normally I would just accept the recommendation on of the city manager for the bid because that's what is typical. Well, if I may, Commissioner Bowers, sure. this is probably the fault of the previous city manager okay. who, uh, <laughs> who, who should have probably had this on a work session. Well, no, I'm not saying that it's no, no, I'm, no I'm not it's saying it's your fault. Um, I, I think that you just assume that, and rightfully so, that this commission would um, accept the recommendation. I don't remember in all of eight years ever having a controversy over a bid award. Maybe there was, but I don't remember it. Um, but so no, I, it's not your fault. Well, as as a former city manager, you can either accept the bid, reject the bid, or free bid. Or oh, okay. I mean, it's entirely up to the board. I guess we could, um, I don't know what the rest of the board thinks, but I guess we could even delay it till next month for a vote. I don't even, is that something we could You do? could take it off the agenda. I think, I think, let's see if anybody else has any questions. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for the chief? Wait, there's no change in this one where you have spe uh, specifications and a bid proposal, which, you know, uh, Harris had it for 15 years, so the process hadn't changed. I'm taking that's correct. Okay. And uh, the three main things you mentioned, storage, standards, and security. I'm just trying to see what's changed. Lowest bid, technical specifications. What? No, technical specifications are the same. The only thing that's changed is the uh, uh, carries towing is a lower price to the citizens for services. Okay. Thank you. If, if it would help the commission, uh, I don't have the entire contract in front of me right now. We just have the one page. I don't know if Steve brought the entire contract with him tonight, but usually uh, there's a 30-day out in our contracts where we can terminate our contracts with 30 days notice if we're dissatisfied with the service that's being provided by a contractor. Excuse me, it, it's in there, Rob. I was going to point that out. Okay, There's great. a paragraph 9 is a 30-day termination that right. the city has. And that's based on if we're dissatisfied with a service. Well, you can terminate it for any reason. Don't 30 days. Worries. 30 days notice. Okay. Any other questions for the chief? Thank you. I'm not. I'm, no, no, no. No, you did it. Chief did a great job as city manager. I know he did. Um, so I wasn't. I was just wondering if there was somewhere in between Abrams and then it got to you. Did something happen that wasn't ordinary? That that's what I was trying well, to ask. But I, I can answer that question actually. Uh, typically, the towing contract gets kind of pushed to the police department because we use it mostly. But there are other other departments involved in the towing of city vehicles. So it, it's really multifaceted. You know, the police department's only only one aspect of it, and we usually take the point on it. 
Yeah, public works with large vehicles, planning and zoning, those vehicles that are in violation. Uh, uh, of course, the fire department's equipment. We, you know, the city has a lot of equipment. So everyone's uh, uh, recommendation was in there. It's not just the police department wasn't the final word. But we okay. went through these bids in the same way that we go through all of the bid process that we did. Yes, bids were advertised. We they were read and. Uh, in a standardized way of looking at those and making comparisons. So. That's correct. It, if it were on likes, I mean, I've, I'm a member of AAA. I've used Carrie's towing. I've, uh, you know, used uh, Harris for 15 years. Went to school with Butch. I, and there, Mr. Kirkland's correct. We don't have a complaint with them. None whatsoever. Thank you. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Make a motion to approve. Okay. Somebody make a motion. It's already been made. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Commissioner Haynes. Yes. Commissioner Bowers. We already had a motion that was yes. way back a long yes, time ago. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I, was I think on. that um, I'm just I'm going to support the recommendation of our city manager. Um, Knowing that if something is found in the next 30 days, we can pull out of the contract. That's correct. If we find something to be wrong um, or that some process was violated. Um, but typically that's what I'm going to do on bid awards unless somebody in the citizenry has knowledge of something that um, I need to know before I vote so that I will vote no based on something that I've had time to explore. Um, so, Mr. Kirkland, Mr. Harrod, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to do what I would normally do. Um, and if I find something that went wrong or was not according to the proper process, um, would it have to be put back on an agenda, or how would that happen? You'd have to have a decision made to terminate the contract. So it would have to come to the <coughs> board for that Yes, again. that would have to come it before be the commission. A recommendation from staff. We're not happy with the service. Well, I guess I will vote yes. Um, and just, I think we need to look at maybe having the contracts for briefer periods of time and, and just say to you, Mr. Perry, good, good luck next time. Um, and please bring me information that I need to know. I, I, I can't really you know, take the time and based on 10 minutes from either side, sit here and, and get everything that I think that you think that I might need to know in order to not do what would be ordinary and that is support um, the city manager's recommendation. So I guess, yes. Commissioner Hayden. Um, there has been plenty of time and discussion and time to, to think about this. It was on an agenda and pulled away, and it was pulled away for to move here. It should have red flag to think that as a commissioner, maybe you should try to get more information. Um, I myself would like to see the city look at a revolving contract, um, understand where the department head comes from not wanting to do that and just having one, one entity. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to say yes to, to support the staff decision with this contract. Mayor Pro Tem Roach. Before I vote, just really quick, that is, to echo what everyone else has said, I, th I think generally you support staff unless they've done something that doesn't make any sense. Um, otherwise, there's not much point in having staff. So, so I, that would lead me toward a yes and it, to further um, amplify that. I think I think Mr. Kirkland's point about Pennywise and Pound Foolish is a good one, but but for a lot of different things. But I think that since it's just a three-year contract and the price is better and the other specs appear to be equal or better, then it's worth us to look at having a new person for three years and see how they do. So I go along with the rest of the commission. Vote yes. Any other new business? Mm 
Ten point two. Ten point two. Does that get taken off? Yes. It's gone. I move adjourn. Well, I don't know if people have commissioner comments or not. If I don't know, I will move adjournment if no one does. I'll second it. Any discussion? Call roll. Yes. Mr. Bowers. Yes. Mr. Hayden. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes. 